let's let's move on to the wideouts. Uh, yeah, some big name guys in easily the deepest position in fantasy. I mean, you got you typically every team typically has at least two wide receivers on the field at, at all times, if not three. Uh, so taking a look at the top, we got a lot of guys uh, that can make a jump in. Uh, two, uh, we got a lot of young guys because these receivers are getting better and better. It seems. Uh, they're giving them their milk early on. Uh, they know what it's about. They're letting them eat. Uh, and let's talk about uh, the LSU duo. Who do we think will finish as a higher wide receiver this season? Will it be Justin Jefferson or will it be Jamar Chase? Uh, each has their pros and cons. One has a better quarterback. One's uh, probably the clear-cut wide receiver. I mean, not clear-cut, but there's a bigger difference between him and his second wide receiver on their team. Um, Jose, I'll ask you first, if you're, you're putting your money on this, who you think is going to finish as a higher wide receiver? Finishing higher fantasy wise, I'm taking Jefferson. As far as talent wise, I think they're neck and neck. And even Jamar, I think he has given Justin Jefferson his props, but fantasy wise, I love Jefferson this year. He's my wide receiver one. Um, obviously I know Carson, that's your guy. Yes, sorry. If he's there, you're not going to get him, bro. That's just how oh, it is. I, I've already accepted that I'm not going to get him. I've already accepted it, but. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's just how it is. So nice. Like, he does everything right. He, you know, he, he gets the separation. He's got the hands. He's got the speed. He's got absolutely everything. And, I mean, he doesn't have a bad QB by any means. Yeah. But I, I, I got to take Jefferson. Uh, I don't yeah. really know if we even need to ask Carson this question. I think we know his answer. No, I'm also extremely high on Jefferson. But, like, it's just cool watching them, you know, like, like I saw them going back and forth, like, oh, like, you know, I'm going to be the first one to 2,000. Like, they're 2,000 yards. They're both challenging each other. I just think that's so awesome. And it's just also so incredible that these two were on the same team together in college. And, like, you know, Joe Burrow, like, that, that will just be, like, something that will, you know, age like fine wine. Like, every, like – couple years we're just gonna look back on like damn they had all those guys on this team like yeah That's just Jefferson and Chase alone like yeah what'd you say them or DK and AJ in college who are you scared of more oh physically the other two I think Jefferson and Chase are better oh yeah no no doubt about that uh I mean yeah, yeah. that that LSU team was simply crazy I mean as a guy who's obviously gonna be a Dick Ryder and say the Miami Hurricanes of 2001 are the greatest team of all time. But <laughs> that team, depending on how Stingley's career goes, how those two wide receivers finish out and how Burrow finishes out very well in the next decade could be considered uh, the best college football team talent wise, and maybe even best college football team of all time if you're weighing all those factors. And I mean, it's no, nobody was stopping those guys. And it's just, just crazy to see, but um, nope. moving on through these lists, um, Got some uh, returning faces and some new faces in my top 10. I want to ask you guys about uh, C.D. Lamb. Jose, obviously, we, we, know, we know your guy. Uh, and Carson, I'll ask you, uh, do you think C.D. Lamb, you know, clear, clear cut wide receiver one on this team by a mile, especially if Michael Gallup um, might not even be there ready for the return of the season and Jalen Tobert, their uh, draft pick this uh, past season, uh, might be the wide receiver too. Do you think C.D. Lamb's destined for just a great fantasy season, or is there going to be a lot of pressure on him? Yeah. Um. I wait. I'm sorry. I, I, was I supposed to go first? Oh, yeah, I'm go. just going to go. No, yeah, man. Okay. Um. No, it's okay. I I think he's going to have a monster year because I think last year we all predicted that it was going to be his year, but I think you know it really it's it's supposed to be this year considering you know Noah Mari, you know Gallup you know I think on paper we all really like Gallup but he never ends up really seeming like do too much and it's not really going to be a, a big competition um in terms of just like you know targets and stuff for Lamb uh, I think uh I think this is is going to be the year considering you know it, it's finally his you know wide receiver room you know no more Amari um and he's just going to get force fed by Dak and uh, I think uh uh, he's not getting as hyped up this year as he was last year, I feel like. Yeah. But he, uh, I think he's going to have a better – because he was, what, like wide receiver 15 last year or something? Uh, he finished – I mean, I had had him on my team and then I traded him. Uh, he finished last year as 19. Um, that he just kind of had some inconsistent performances, missed the game. The last 
his last uh, like four weeks were all below 12 points. So uh, not good for that, but. Oh, yeah, we're so we're getting the regression to the regression, the mean, you know, in the positive direction. Yeah, I, I think I'm all in on CD this year. Yeah, and uh, he's ESPN's number seven. He's my number five. I just think that uh, he's going he's gonna to turn up this year. But, Jose, we got to ask you, of course. Yeah, what yeah. Obviously, yeah. obviously, Lamb's my fucking guy. Like, even with the weak-ass wide receiver room, they're going to find ways to get him open. Like, it's Kellen Moore. I have zero doubt about that. And, I mean, they're going to work him inside, outside. You know, they're going to get him targets, and they're going to get him open. Because at the end of the day, like, it's CeeDee Lamb. He's one of the shiftiest guys in the league. Like, he's got nice hands, and he's getting bigger. Like, he's he physically looks a lot stronger. He looks like an absolute force when he's running. He doesn't look as, you know, skinny and fragile as he once did. So CD Lamb this year is, you know, going to be a wide receiver one. Um, yeah. 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 Both that. No doubt. Yeah, exactly. Um, some more guys we got to dig into, kind of working our way down the list. Uh, that kind of middle tier that I got, seven through 10, uh, I think all kind of interchangeable. Uh, we got Diggs, we got Keenan Allen, we got Debo and Mike Evans. Uh, Carson, I got to ask you about Debo. I don't know if I'm buying into the top five again because I think after they had all these contract negotiations, it's it's a surprise that he's even still a 49er to me. Um, I think he's still one of the best wide receivers in the NFL. I mean, he still put up, what, 1,400 yards last year? Like, he still was uh, a beast receiving the ball and the eight rushing touchdowns, but destined to see some regression there. Um, where are you ranking him uh, on your own personal board? Um, you have him ninth. Uh, I'm not really sure to, like exactly where I'd rank him, but I think he's definitely still going to be a wide receiver one this year. I think in, in a lesser scale, like Cooper Cup, I think you know he was so great last year. He had this you know insane season, and yeah, he's bound to regress. But I think that's still it doesn't make him you know like it's like he's not going to be good or anything. I think he's still going to have close to the production of last year you know maybe the touchdowns go down but maybe you know the the catches go up maybe they use him slightly less as a runner but you know they give him more catches you know it's obviously ppr that's going to be huge and he's still going to be a beast i mean and you know trey lance there too you know just the idea of having trey lance Debo, and then like one of whoever you know xyz in in you know playing running back is just um I'm so excited for that. It could go to anybody. Anybody can make a play. And Kyle Shanahan, I mean, we saw last year, you know, that third and seven against the Packers, you know, he he didn't overcomplicate things. He he simplified it. Just give the ball to Debo and, you know, we're winning or losing with, you know, the ball in our best player's hands. And I, I think he, I think Shanahan's going to keep it like that this year too and give him a ton of volume. Mm -hmm. And then Jose, what are your opinions on guys like, like Diggs? Keenan Allen, is he going to continue to be a 100 catches, 1,000 yards? And Mike Evans, the glorified 1,000-yard guy, despite all the people in the room, is it still going to be the value that he's continuously been? Yeah, I was surprised you had Diggs so low because I think of all the guys in the top, you know, the top five or six, he has just as good of a chance to finish as wide receiver one as pretty much anyone. I mean, mm -hmm. we've seen the connection. I think the only downside with him is just, like, there's a lot of mouths to feed in, in Buffalo. But they're going to be such a high-powered really offense that, you know, it might, not, it might not matter. It might not matter. Yeah, he's clearly the, you know, the, the alpha one receiver to any of the other guys. And the volume there, it's, it's going to be there. And I, I can't see him finishing outside the top, you know, eight at all. Definitely. Definitely. No, yeah, I think he's hey. top ten. I just think there's so many other guys with insane potential over him. And yeah. Knox is getting more. But he's a super safe pick, though. Like, you, you know oh, no. what you're going to get with Diggs, for sure. I think he's, yeah, amongst the safest of the group. He's falling. He, he is falling hard. I'd say he's, he, in my top ten, I think he's safer than Keenan Allen. I think he's safer than Keenan Allen, which is. I think like, he's safer than A.J. Brown, too. I'm going to be honest. I think A.J. Brown maybe has more potential, but A.J. Brown's been hurt, and they're, they are a run first team, so. He might be safer than Debo, too, because Debo's only had one year of great production. Yeah, Debo has yeah, yeah. Debo has injuries. Diggs has been, uh, been to that guy. But uh, moving down the list, we got to talk about the Miami receivers. Obviously, I've seen 
I, I, I forgot. Yeah, I saw some dude's TikTok. He was like grading the receivers. He has Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddle both in the top 10. I almost spit my water out. I, I don't <laughs> think that's possible unless. Maybe if Herbert was their quarterback. But... <laughs> yeah, if Herbert was their quarterback. And yeah. if McDaniel put them in the as their two running backs every play. But um, <laughs> no, what are, what are your thoughts? Do you think uh, how, where are these guys going to finish? Uh, Carson will ask you with Tyreek and Waddle. Uh, is there one that you're more favorite? I mean, Aussie Hill's the most, um, you know, prominent receiver, but is there a guy maybe you lean towards Waddle a little bit more? I want to hear your thoughts. Yeah, I'm definitely leaning towards Waddle more just because, you know, he had that great season last year. You know, Ty- Tyreek Hill is going to get, you know, all that attention because he's Tyreek Hill. And I think Waddle's just going to have a ton of, just ton of easy, you know, open catches with, I think Hill, having Hill there is just really going to help Waddle. And I'd rather, I don't think, like, I don't know if this is a hot take or not, but I don't think their stats are going to be that much different. I think they're going to be really close. I'm just really high on Waddle's talent and his connection with Tua that they proved last year. That was one of the bright spots of Tua's season. It's just how, you know, how well he was able to get the ball to, you know, Jalen Waddle. And I think they're going to be close in production and you can get Waddle like two, three rounds later than Tyree Kill. And I just like the value more with Waddle. Yeah. Yeah. Jose? I could definitely see that. I could definitely see Tyreek being more of a decoy type receiver and just being frustrated with that. You know, we know Tua doesn't have Mahomes' arm. Regardless of everything Tyreek wants to say in interviews that he has a nicer ball or he has, a you know, more arm strength, we know that's fucking cap. And there's yeah. no, no way he's going to hit him for as many deep balls. There's just no way. Mm-hmm. No, yeah. I mean, the thing with Waddle is just like, he had one of the lowest like yards per reception, like kind of shocking under 10 is like pretty like interesting that you're, the dude's not getting a first down every catch, which typically for elite wide receivers, they're 12 or North of that. I mean, Jamar chase and Debo Samuel last year were just off the charts, 18 plus for both of them. But um, I don't know. I mean, Waddle, I would love to think it's a situation where it's, I mean, you could say sure. Tyreek Hill is the Antonio Brown and Jalen Waddle is that Juju Smith Schuster who outshines them due to the fact that you got to guard the more dominant receiver. But again, everything's dependent on how Tua does. I mean, Tua, yeah, he could be that check down merchant to him, but I don't know. I feel like it's their their top heavy guys. There's three of them. It's Gusecki, uh, Tua. I mean, it's Gusecki, Tyreek, and Waddle, and with a run first coach coming in there, it's kind of, I feel like there's a lot of mouths to feed and, you know, it'd be hard to see both those guys get over a thousand yards. In my opinion, I could see maybe Waddle might, you know, could score more touchdowns or something like that, but I don't know. It's, it's a real shaky situation with me and it's not one I think I can put my money on until like four weeks into the season. I can say. Yeah, it really, Tua is a, ma- he is a massive question mark. Like it, you, we really are going to have to, you know, believe it when we see it with him uh uh-huh. yeah and then uh moving through we got uh some more guys uh, in and around that tier uh two guys I want to uh highlight with their uh situations this season marquise brown and michael Pittman jr marquise brown heading to reunite with his old college quarterback in tyler murray will be the clear-cut wide receiver one in that offense with uh deandre hopkins missing uh the first couple weeks how do we think he will go about this season? And do you think he will remain fantasy relevant after Hopkins comes back? Because Marquise Brown, outside of Zach Ertz, I don't really trust any of those other options out there. I mean, like, Rondo Moore is just kind of like a worse version of him, of Marquise Brown is kind of what I see it as. So definitely. Jose, what, what are your thoughts with uh, Brown uh, this season? We talked about, we talked about the Cardinals earlier. I, I have no fucking clue. I mean, I know for sure he's going to be involved before Hopkins gets there. And after he gets there, it's really just up in the air at that point because, I mean, we know Hopkins is going to demand targets. People say he's getting old and he's falling off, but Hopkins is still extremely talented. And Hollywood Brown, I mean, we have seen him be an absolute non-factor before. Like, we have seen him – be out there for a majority of the game and just do absolutely nothing. Cardio. Yeah. 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 Carson Cardio. knows firsthand. Like, <laughs> so 
I don't know. But as far as Michael Pittman Jr., I mean, I fucking love the dude this year. Uh, Same. We loved him last year. I love him even more this year. He's he's going to be amazing. Yeah, I mean, what's his ADP? His ADP is 13th, wide receiver 13. I mean, yeah. they're all saying, you got to remember, Matt Ryan targets his wide receiver one like no one other. Julio mm-hmm. Jones, despite him obviously being dominant, he had those numbers because of Matt Ryan. Calvin Ridley's breakout season had those numbers because of Matt Ryan. And you- now heading into Indianapolis, is he going to lose that flame or is he going to continue to make Michael Pittman Jr., who – same sort of physique to a guy like Julio Jones. Not saying- And also, who are their other receivers? Like Alec I Pierce, mean, Paris Campbell, no one else. Yeah. It's, it's just, so I feel like it's just Pittman. Pittman's the only guy you can really trust. Mm-hmm. No, yeah. Um, no anymore. Do you think Pittman got that, you know, top eight potential? Would you, would you bank on him doing that high? Yes. If anyone's going to outperform their ADP in these mid round receivers, it's going to be Pittman. He has the mold to be, you know, a star in this league. And he's got the QB to be a star in this league. I mean, he's going to get funnel targets. There's nobody else in that offense besides Jonathan Taylor. So, mm-hmm. 100%. Yep. Totally agree. No, no, go ahead. I was just going to say, I wanted to circle back to Hollywood Brown real quick. I see the vision, like, you know, him being with this, uh, you know, old college QB, um, you know, no Hopkins. I've just been burnt too many times by Hollywood Brown. I've been too disappointed. It just seems like every year, you know, I mean, who knows? You know, you know Kyler might throw on the ball more than, than Lamar. I, I just don't know. I, I'm just kind of out on it. And I, like I said, I see the vision. I see, you know, if he does have a good season, I, I completely understand why he would. The, the markings you know, are on the wall. I just, I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm just, I, I'm just not going to be able to take him. It's just I mean, one of those guys I've just been burnt too many times, you know? Yeah, I mean – Obviously, he had a, a better season last year. And then the Baltimore he did have a better season last are just, year. The, the Ravens are just notorious for not having great wide – I mean, like, h- targeting their wide receivers a ton. I mean, tell me the last time you can think off the top of your head, like, the last, like, Ravens wide receiver that finished anything relevant in fancy or regular or relevant option. Like – I have no – yeah, I have no idea. I don't know. Like, what? Like, Steve Smith? Like, was that the last guy that was, like, fancy relevant? Yeah. Dude, Loki, yeah. And even he was just yeah, – it's not like he was, like, a wide receiver one or anything. Like, No, uh, yeah. It was just – because, what, Mike Wallace was, like, the wide receiver one in Baltimore for two seasons, but, like, didn't really have anything crazy. I don't know. I think he's he's getting to a far better situation with a guy in Cliff Kingsbury that probably might be able to tap into him. He is – I mean, yeah, he's got an extremely high ceiling. He's got an extremely low floor. I mean, it's as simple as it is. He's not a safe pick, but – if you're in a position where you need to make a splash on a guy, he could be a guy that's worth a pick. But um, moving further hey, down. Can we talk about uh, – real quick, can we talk about Denver's wide receivers? Like, what do you guys Ooh. think about Sutton and Judy? Like, who who would you guys take out of those two to, you know, maybe be, like, the guy? Sutton. Sutton has just as much potential as Judy, and I think he's got a lot more touchdown upside. And, I mean, Russell Wilson is elite in the red zone. Ever since he didn't throw the ball in the red zone that one time, he's been elite, and Sutton's going to be the guy in the red zone. It's not going to be Judy. Yeah, I mean, it's interesting because there's the guy we all want it to be. We all want it to be Judy because we know Judy's got the best yeah. the best running in the NFL. But, yeah, I don't know. It's it's because people, they're trying to make the stretch and say, well, Devontae Adams was a similar situation as Jerry Judy and then uh, – he finally started to come around, and now he's one of the best. And they've got a similar build and all that stuff. I don't know. It's I don't even want to draft either of them at this point. They're they they they're too worrisome. Unless I get both of them, I but which I think would be a waste. I, yeah. I don't. Know. I think I would say Sutton though is the guy I value the most because uh, he's the guy who's actually had previous production. But Judy seems. I like agree. I just like him as a big him. target. You know. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. if you're watching film, you think Judy's going to be the most. So, um, yeah. okay, uh, real quick, yeah. I wanted to bring this up to all of you. So, 2021, second year wide receivers CD Lamb, Justin Jefferson, T Higgins, Michael Pittman, and Darnell Mooney all went over a thousand yards in their second season. Wow, that's impressive. Ye- year two for this year, Devonta Smith, Elijah Moore, Rashad Bateman, Kadarius Tony. 
and Amon Ross St. Brown. Who breaks out? St. Brown and Moore. I, those are my two favorites of that list. Yeah, I'd say the same thing. I think Elijah Moore is far better than Garrett Wilson is right now. I think he's yeah. – we've seen the hype since his rookie – like, I forgot who it was. It was like Jalen Ramsey or someone tweeted, like, Elijah Moore is going to be an all-pro one day. And I, I truly think so. I think he's quarterback-proof, like that Terry McLaurin kind of guy that, you know, doesn't really need a great quarterback to succeed. Um, definitely could see that. And I think both both of them already showed it last year. I mean, Amon Ross, A. Brown had that – Absolute insane stretch to end the season. Moore had, you know, a few really great games, you know, sprinkled in last year. And compared, who were the other three? Who were the other three guys? Yeah, I already forgot them. Smith, Bateman, and Tony. Oh, Smith, Bateman, and Tony. Yeah, I, I just think they had like higher upside games than than all three of those guys. But I do still really like Devonte Smith. I think you know he should be you know somewhat close to a thousand yards. I, I like. You know, I, I like him a lot too, but definitely more and Amon Ross St. Brown are my two favorites from, from that group. Two run heavy offense in uh, the Philadelphia for both receivers to be 1,000 yards, is my, my opinion. But I, I yeah, see- it just sucks because they both, they're so, ta- like Brown and him are just so talented. That's that's a really nice duo. Mm-hmm. But like Bateman is, is the only guy out there. Like, who is their wide receiver too? Devin Dugan. I know. <laughs> I know. But we, this is just Marquise Brown all over again. Yeah, but still, bro. Like, I don't know. Where I did know. It Bateman and Andrews. Bateman and Andrews. No, Bateman can definitely be a guy we look back on this episode and be like, why did we, like, not recognize him? Like, he Yeah, because you're right. I mean, he is their wide receiver one. It's like we might just be, you know, but overcomplicating could, shit. It could be we come back next year and you're like, Ah, uh, well, remember Carson drafted Bateman. You know, he regrets that. He's going to never draft a Ravens player if his life depends on it, you know? It could be like yeah. that. Like, he could be – like, if I s- see a little shine in him, like, he might be a guy you want to buy low on. Or, like, uh, that's what I could see him as a buy low candidate early season if people – if he's not putting up great production to start. He might be a guy that could, you know, start the ball out later depending on how their schedule looks and matchup-wise. Definitely. Mm-hmm. And then Tony, like, bro, Tony's the yeah. Tony, yak guy. Like, he's a yak guy, but it is the Giant. He's a New York Giant. Simple yeah. as that. No, he's definitely, like, the, one of the most shiftiest players we've ever seen. Like, they say, like, the yeah. dude's got no, like, bones in his legs. Like, he just, like, got no ACLs. Like, he can move like no one. But, <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Hopefully, I think Shaper will be able to tap into him. But I've heard Wando Robinson, their uh, pick from Kentucky, this pass off a draft. Has also been a guy that's taken over a lot of snaps, and he's in the same position. Fuck Galladay, I mean, fuck Galladay, bro. He's not gonna. He's gonna be one of the worst oh. in the NFL uh, end of this year, guarantee. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But uh, let's look at some uh, guys that we don't want to touch this year, and just bad situations. I think the two Seahawks guys got to be talked about. Are we all in agreement on that. Yep. Yes. And, um, Amari Cooper. We don't know his quarterback, assuming if it goes the way it is, Jacoby Brissett will be uh, the starter there. Do you think Cooper is going to be – this is the worst quarterback of his career, no doubt. Obviously, Derek Carr and Dak Prescott are fantastic quarterbacks, can arguably both top ten quarterbacks going all the way. He's going to have to wait a long time for Deshaun Watson to come back, and it's not worth the ADP to save a guy like that on your roster. Uh, what are our thoughts, Os- Jose, obviously? Cooper, do you think he's a no? He reminds, can't touch him? He reminds me of Jarvis Landry, you know, on the Browns. Like, he's just going to have a Jarvis Landry-ass season, I just feel like. He's going to have a bunch of, like, you know, low routes, underneath routes, you know, hitch routes, shit like that. He's not ca- he's not catching and breaking away for any big plays or anything. They're not hitting him in stride, you know, on a crossing route or anything. Uh, it's fucking Jacoby Brissett, bro. Like, <laughs> you really expect him yeah. to do? I don't know. He's gonna be Jarvis Landry. No, yeah, I, I agree. If Watson's suspension was six games, then it's it's a much different story. Um, because then I mean, you know, Watson Watson is your quarterback. It's just night and day, talent wise. But um, yeah, eleven game. It's too much to wait for. You know what he's probably gonna be doing, like you know, ten points a game or something like that. I don't know. Yeah, it's kind of like a week nine bye and like a, you know, a week 
10 trade deadline or something. I don't, I don't know when the trade deadline is, but yeah, I would give him a fly baby. If he's like underperforming the guy who has him, you know, doesn't really want him anymore. Give him, give him a go. Yeah. That would probably definitely be like, like whoever drafts him, and yeah, inevitably when he's like disappointing, like we're all just going to be like lurking like sharks around, you know, when Watson's coming back and we're all going to try and snag him. Mm-hmm. Uh, any other that, that could be a good playoff guy. I mean, if, if they really have a solid connection, you know. Yeah, because if they got to throw a lot, you know, to win games, they can't relush, rely entirely on that running attack. Uh, other guys on this list that need to be on this do not touch list? Is Darnell Mooney a do not um, Oh, I love Mooney, bro. Oh, I love Mooney because who the fuck else is on that team? True. Yeah, that's uh, the thing. Yeah. Like, he, too, much, to get the ball too much opportunity. And also, like, um, do not target name, a, name a player that, like, is on that offensive line in Chicago. <laughs> okay, I'm not going to be able to do it. Yeah. Hey, bro. Tevin Jenkins getting traded. He, he was supposed to be good, but now nah, he wants to leave. Uh, yeah, they got no one out there. Uh, I don't know. I think he could be. I don't know. He's got to fall, like, like, late for me to want to touch him. That's the only thing I got to say. But other guys, though? Any ones that come to mind that you just don't want to touch at all? Um, or just room uh, you don't even want to deal with, like the Giants receiving room? Yeah. The, there's just teams. Like, I don't want any Giants. I don't want any Patriots. Command. You can maybe talk me into Christian Kirk, maybe, but I don't really want any Jaguars for the most part. Mm-hmm. Um, who Mooney. else? Yeah, besides Mooney, definitely no Bears. No Chiefs besides Juju. Mm-hmm. Oh, so um, you have no faith in Sky Moore, you don't no. think? Uh, oh, I forgot about Sky Moore. Yeah, I mean, he can be yeah. solid. Like, uh, you know, it's worth a flyer. But everybody else, I mean, like Scanling, you know, Spardman, like, you know, no way. Mm-hmm. All right, so. Uh, Moore is definitely worth a little flyer. I, for, I forgot about him because we just haven't seen him play yet. Yeah, some guys, uh, high upside and high level offenses, honestly, the things you want to look for. Uh, two of the guys that top that list got to be Juju and Allen Robinson. Uh, Juju, this man's so young. He came in the league at like 19 years old or something like that. Like he was ridiculously young. He's been around for a while, but uh, wasn't too long ago where this guy was uh, putting up what 1,400 yards, uh, and that was if you want to show me in his year 22, his 22 year old season, put up 1,400 yards and seven touchdowns on the Steelers. Uh, now going into a much more favorable place, uh, coming off an injury. Um, I think he's primed to be a guy who could be a top 10 player because he is only 26 years old. So what are your guys' thoughts on Juju? I'm all in on Juju too. All in. Go ahead. Go ahead, Jose, though. I'll go after you. Yeah, I like him because he's probably going to be a a primary slot receiver, and we saw Tyreek succeed there a lot. Um, but I just don't know if he's getting back to 1,400 yards and however many touchdowns. Like, I don't know about that. But I could definitely see him going over over 1K for sure. Yeah, I, I totally – like, I'm, I'm all in too because, I mean, it's just – you got to simplify it. It's like, you know, there's Travis Kelsey and then he's their next top guy in a Patrick Mahomes-led team. I mean, you know, the last few – last couple of years, he was playing with, you know, Ben Roethlisberger, who was, you know, on his deathbed practically. And now he's going to Patrick Mahomes, one of the best quarterbacks in the game. Um, yeah, 100% super high on him. And, you know, he's got, he's getting faded because, uh, you know, TikTok stuff, whatever, blah, blah, blah. But, like, it's just too juicy. He, Patrick Mahomes is his quarterback now. Like, you know, and he's going to be the wide receiver one, you know, clearly. And, and it's nice, too, you know, he he doesn't have, you know, once Brown left, it you it really showed that, you know, Brown helped hit his game out a lot. And I think that's how kind of Kelsey's going to be. Like, Kelsey's really going to help him get a lot of easy looks. And, uh, I mean, yeah, he's always been really talented. He's, he's done it, you know. And, and like you said, Liam, you made a great point that he's still super, super young. So, mm-hmm. I'm all in on it, too, especially where he's going. I mean, he's going, like, what, like, like sixth, seventh round, the earliest? Like, am I uh, wrong on that? The 32nd wide receiver behind Renfro, Cooper, Gabriel. Yeah, Dave, so you're betting Arnold. on him to be a top 30 receiver? Like, come on. Like, that – definitely. Yeah. Real quick, though. Hey, oh, yeah. Can we talk about Renfro real quick? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't like Renfro. I like Renfro. 
It's a, I mean, I guess, yeah, he's the only slot guy in that team, but like Devontae Adams and Carr go, go back to college. They're both extremely dominant there. Like, yeah. Waller had a bad season, like a step back season. I mean, I think, I think he can still be serviceable, but like I could see him being Tyler Boyd, like just getting phased out. Yeah, my my perspective is just like I'm I'm more like the half glass full in the sense of like like Adams and Waller are just gonna get a ton of like they're gonna get a ton of volume, but they're gonna get a ton of coverage. And like basically if I'm a defensive coordinator, if we're all defensive coordinators, it's like, okay, who are we gonna take out? Like it goes Adams, it goes Waller, and then Renfro's third. So I feel like Renfro's just gonna just have so many open looks, like tons and tons of open looks, you know, putting up like five to ten catches, you know, a game. Yeah, I guess you can see that. Oh, one second. But the volume stuff, that is like, that is a valid point. I mean, he is, you know, their third pass catcher, but. Yeah, so uh, Gabriel Davis, though, I want to talk on. Do you think Gabe Davis, like, is worth that ADP? Because. Obviously, it's all because if he had the 200 yards and four touchdown game uh, in the playoffs against the Chiefs. But I don't really know if Davis is, you know, worth being ranked higher than guys like Allen Robinson, uh, Michael Thomas, Chris Godwin, uh, Hunter Renfro, Adam Thielen. What are your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, he's getting a lot of hype considering like he only just had like that one big playoff game last year. But they did lose Beasley and I think there is – Oh, they added Crowder, but he he is going to be the wide receiver too on one of the best offenses. So I think that alone helps. But the ADP is very high for someone that you know still hasn't really hasn't really proven himself besides that one game. Yeah, because it says Davis has yet to produce a top fifty-five fantasy campaign, which is yeah. insane, insane to have. Yeah. That so you're you're like just betting on the opportunity and you know him being the wide receiver two on the Bills. Yeah, yeah, he hasn't done it anything yet, so. Yeah. I mean, I know all the UCF people love him, but I don't know. <laughs> but uh, let's just talk about a couple more guys. Um, Allen Robinson, I love him, I think. He, top 10 in uh, Chicago, he's going to continue to be great. Uh, what are some rookies, though, you guys like? Because uh, I know George Pickens has become an NFL favorite. I forget, what's his NFL young boy? That's his nickname. Literally. 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 <laughs> but uh, – who are some other guys you guys uh, might like at the uh, rookie receiver position? Um, my mine's Traylon Burks. I just think I mean similar to like Bateman. It's just like he's like the wide receiver one already. I mean, well, you can say that about Woods, but I think I, I don't really trust Woods too much anymore. I think Burks has the talent to really like step up and he's like easily be the wide receiver one. He has an easy path to be that. So, mm-hmm. yeah. You know, any other guys, uh, rookies? Olave, Olave could be pretty productive as a rookie. I saw him. I, don't, I think he got a touchdown yesterday. Yeah, was, the that's pretty nice. Mm-hmm. But uh, hey, Winston has to throw that deep ball to somebody. So yeah, I'm liking Michael Thomas's return to arc. I, I'm I'm feeling it. I is think it finally like, time for Michael <laughs> Thomas? He's like wide receiver 29. It, it's hard for me to think that. I mean. If he's healthy, I, I can't see him not finishing like wide. Well, he he came into camp. He's like fully healthy, right? Like he hasn't yeah. had any setbacks or anything. Yeah, I mean, twenty nine years old though, but like he's gonna get a ton of targets. Like I can't. Yeah, imagine. he kind of is like a sleeping giant. Like, yeah, yeah. It's just hard for me not to see him like produce. But mm-hmm. I mean, he had one of the greatest. Because we've seen it before. I mean, we've seen it, you know, a couple seasons. Yeah. Uh, any other guys you guys want to touch on before we uh, talk about on? it? Well, I was gone. I, I see you have Tolbert on here. Oh, we didn't talk about him. Yeah. What are your thoughts on Tolbert? I, I haven't seen much of him, but I think he could. I think he's gonna get some sort of targets, kind of similar to uh, fuck, what was that guy's name that we had last year that was randomly putting up like stats? Ah, uh, uh, it was like C- Cedric Wilson. There we Cedric go. Cedric Wilson. Yeah, he was in the Dolphins. Yeah. Uh, like, hmm. Tolbert's going to be our Cedric Wilson this year. Uh, that's how I feel. Mm-hmm. Uh, I yeah. don't know how, how much he's going to put up, though. 